All right, so here is a problem that we have to do. It says state the intervals over which the following function is continuous. So first of all, uh, we need to look at the definition. And uh, starting with part I, so it says a function f of x continues at a point A if and only if the following three conditions are satisfied. So we need to make sure f of A is defined. Well, um, this function is only defined when this piece is greater than zero, right? So uh, if it's a square root of this uh, quadratic, the quadratic has to be bigger than zero. And this and f is only defined there. So we need to um, figure out on which interval this function is defined to begin with. So uh, let's go ahead and do this. This has to be greater than zero. Um, so let's figure out what the endpoints are of that interval. And so we're going to go ahead and factor out a minus 2x, which leaves me with an x minus or x plus 1. And uh, I would say probably uh, just to be clear here, let's figure out what the endpoints are in order to figure out on which interval it's greater than zero. So we're doing some side work here. Um, obviously, if we set this equal to zero, we find out that x is zero is one of the endpoints of that interval. And then x plus one is zero, which means that x is negative one is the other endpoint of that interval. And so um, it's helpful then to think of the number line. And we're going to go ahead and put zero here. Oh, actually, that's backwards. We're going to go ahead and put negative one here. We're going to go ahead and put um, zero here. And then try to determine what the signs are, because we're interested in the piece where the curve is greater than zero. And so um, what we might do is do a test point in each of those intervals. So then maybe uh, let's try, um, let's go ahead and do it over here. Let's find f of uh, negative two. So if I plug in a negative two, this is negative two times negative two squared. I'm using the inside function only because I just want that piece to be bigger than zero. Uh, minus two times negative two. So this is gonna be minus two times four uh, plus four. So that's negative eight plus four, which is uh, negative four. So this is gonna be negative over here on this side. If I try something in between the negative one and the zero, say, um, say a half or minus a half. Not the easiest thing to work with, but it's probably the easiest thing that we've got in that interval. And so I've got a negative two, and then this is a one quarter. Uh, and this is um, plus one. And so I've got uh, one minus a half. So this is a half. So this is positive. And then uh, finally, let's try something in the other interval over here. So let's try one. That should be pretty easy to do. So negative two times one squared uh, minus two times one. And that's negative two minus two. So that's negative four. So this is a negative. So it's gonna be positive on that interval only 
So it's only defined on that interval. So now we need to figure out, so this is, it is defined on that. F of A is defined, but we, but it's only defined uh, if A is an element of, um, well, let's just say from negative one to zero. Now let's check that the limit of f of x exists on, on that interval. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and use a composite function. So we're kind of, we're checking i, i here. This was a check of i. And so um, the limit of, we can think of this as a, as a composite function because I've got minus two x squared minus two x. So uh, maybe let's use different letters here. Uh, let's, let's use uh, m of x is the square root of x and then n of x is this quadratic. So as x approaches a, so then uh, I've got to bring this out and then I need to find the limit of minus x squared minus two x as x approaches a. And of course, um, This is a polynomial, so its limit is going to be we basically plug in a to a, which is also equal to f of a. So we also kill we kill two birds with one stone. That's a check of three. So it exists, and it's also equal to f of a, we've got one last thing to check. As I stated before, we were simply checking a in this open interval. So now we need to check uh, what the limit is. So we're, we're I'm going to check all three of these um, from the as x approaches zero. So let's start with as x approaches negative one from the left. Oops. This is going to be a minus the square root of minus two to the negative one squared minus two to the ne negative one, which is the square root of the limit of minus two to negative one squared minus negative one as x approaches negative one from the left. And that's going to be the square root of um, minus two okay. uh, let me make sure that I don't forget some pieces there should be a two here. So it's going to be plus two, which is zero, which by the way, is also f of negative one. I'm not going to do that check. I'll let you do the check. But if I plug in a negative one into this function, I will get zero. And then the final thing that I have to do is check the limit of this function so 
x, as x approaches zero from the right. So that's going to be using the composite function theorem. Bring out the lim the radical. The limit is uh, uh, the limit we're trying to find is of minus two x squared, which is an inside function minus two x as x approaches zero from the right. So then uh, this is radical and um, this is a polynomial. So I need, simply need to plug in the zero by the limit laws. And this is a square root of zero, which is zero, which is the same as f of zero. I'm not gonna check that, you can check it. So it's also true at the endpoints. So the interval becomes brackets, negative one comma zero brackets. So that's the answer that we're looking for. That there is the interval on which this function is continuous.